We're back for MCT4C Day 15, Part 2. Um, we're on to Example 3 here, where we're, we're asked to um, write this as a sine graph. Now, what we've seen before is that most things are the same, aren't they? But, but you know, the phase shift makes it seem difficult to be able to, to write it as a sine graph. So um, we know our final answer is going to look like this. where most of the stuff is the same, right? It's going to have the same amplitude. It's going to have the same period. It's going to have the same axis. You know, what's going to be different is just the starting spot. The cosine, the sine are related that they're just shifted left or right a little bit. So all we need to do is see if we can figure out where the starting spot is for the sine graph. Now, how do we do that? I think it's the easiest thing is to do a graph of this one and see if we can sort of picture uh, a sine graph when we graph this coast graph. Um, well, let's get at it. Uh, this is just a, a rough sketch, so I'm not going every three ticks important points or what, you know, I'm just going to do a rough sketch here. Um, my axis is three, so my starting spot's going to be up here somewhere. That's three. Um, the amplitude is five, so it's going to go up five units from there and down five units from there. So this isn't going to look perfect, but um, up five units is to eight, down five units is to minus two. So it's going to go sort of back and forth between these three lines. There's the maximum axis and minimum. The coast graph has moved, been moved right 60. Now, this is kind of important because it's going to help me with the starting spot, isn't it? Right? The starting spot is right 60. Right? So the coast graph is right, starts right there. Right? Right 60. There's the starting spot right there. And then where do I go from there if I wanted to sketch the rest of this coast graph? Well, I'd have to think of once I got the starting spot, which is right 60 and start at the high point, the maximum, which is the axis plus the amplitude up at 8. The next point I get from the important points, right? So the important points are usually every 90, but when we've got a Phase, or sorry, a period change divided by B, which is every 45. So we got important points every 45 degrees, and we decide that that's every one and a half ticks, right? So if I think of this, every one and a half tick starting at 60, one and a half is there, you know, and then down here and so on. Um, the big thing is, I'm looking for the start spot for the sine graph, right? So I'd actually like to go backwards a tick and a half, backwards a tick and a half, because from the maximum going backwards, that's where I'm going to get my sine graph, right? Right there. That's the point I want. And if this was the point 60 degrees 8, or the maximum for the sine graph, I move back one tick, or sorry, one important point, one and a half ticks, back a bit, that's going to give me the start of the, the, the sine graph. This, this is the point 15 degrees, because important points happen every 45 degrees. 60 minus 45 is 15. And then at the axis, which was 3. So that right there is my start spot for the sine. Most of the stuff is all the same. The amplitude's the same. The period B value is the same. The axis was still 3. The big new thing is the, the phase shift. And the phase shift is right 15 degrees. And then I can, I can write my function. So the strategy there was to do a sketch until we could see the, the sine graph. And it wasn't, that wasn't too much of a hassle, really. Pretty easy.
Good. Example four. Same sort of thing, except for we're given a a, a graph. So sine function, I'm going to write the general form. And then we're just going to start picking this stuff off the graph. Oh, um, A equals... Well, see, what I like doing is I like sketching in that, the axis and see where where does the axis... The axis happens halfway between the minimum and maximum, so I'm going to draw that in there just so I can see it. Um, A is from the axis to the maximum, that's two units. Right? Amplitude's two. Um, the period. Well, the period is how, you know, the B value, how often does it start copying itself? Well, it's from there to there, the graph starts copying itself. And that's 120 degrees, 30, 60, 90, 120. So I'm going to do a little rough work over here. The period was 120. We also know that that's 360 divided by B. And hopefully you can see that B is 3, but if I needed to cross multiply, divide by 120, I get B equals 3. I want to also mention that this B value, if I think about how many graphs I can fit in between 0 and 360, that's also B. See, there's 1. There's two, there's three, B is three. Um, C value is the axis. We see the axis has been moved up one, so C is one. And the phase shift, so where does the sine graph start? Well, it starts at the axis, and it looks like we could settle for a phase shift of zero, although we could have went right 120 or right a whole bunch there, how much ever that is. And there's an infinite number of answers here, but uh, we just write one one of them. Usually the easiest one, right? And again, B is 3, D is 0. So again, this kind of looks goofy for now. We, we would never write in the minus 0, which means these brackets aren't necessary. So 3x and then plus 1 on the end. A cosine function. Well, we, in the last example, we talked about how they were different. Um, the cosine function is just the sine function moved left or right. So the only thing that's going to switch here, really, is the phase shift. So all I have to do is is pick the, the what the phase shift is. And, and the cosine starts at its maximum. It's right there, isn't it? Well, what's that? How much is that? It's been a cosine graph has mo been moved um, right one tick. Well, each tick is 30 degrees, right 30 degrees. So instead of a phase shift of 0 for part B, it's a phase shift of, of right 30. And I can write the function really quick. Oops, two sets of brackets plus one. Dandy, moving on. Long lesson today, six examples, holy moly. Okay, basic sine curve has been, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So uh, it's a sine curve. I'm going to write a sine bx minus d plus c, and then we got to see if we can start picking this stuff out. And there's a bit of work involved here. Uh, reflected in the x-axis, so that means... It's a sine graph reflected in the x-axis. Instead of going up, it's going to go down, right? Reflected in the x-axis. Well, that's easy, right? That just means the a value, once we figure out what the amplitude is, it'll be minus that. So minus whatever the amplitude is. Um, all right, so we got that part. Reflected in the y-axis. And we haven't seen this before. It's because usually it doesn't make much difference because if the graph is going this way, and I reflect it in the y-axis, it means it's going this way, but the graph had stuff going on that way anyway. Notice the reflection in the direction of x, reflected in the y-axis as a reflection this way, means that something's been reflected horizontally. 
means there's going to be a reflection somehow in with the x. That one was negative, was the a, that, that was, you know, a reflection in the x-axis. A reflection in the y-axis, horizontal reflection, that means b is going to be negative. We haven't seen that very much, and it's not often written in there, but, oh well, reflected in the y-axis. We know the b value is going to be negative because there's a reflection in with the x. Vertically stretched stretch by a factor of 2. Vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Vertically stretched by a factor of 2 means the amplitude is 2. Right? So that means A is going to be minus 2. Horizontally stretched by a factor of 3. So that means horizontally stretched by a factor of 3. Well, what does that mean? We think horizontally stretched should be multiplying a value in with the x by 3, but it's opposite, right? Horizontally stretched by a factor of 3 means b is the opposite. It's a third, isn't it? We saw when b was 3, it ended up being, instead of that sort of function, it would be horizontally squished. Horizontally stretched by a factor of 3 is the opposite. That makes sense. So b is negative 1 third shifted right 56 right 56 d is 56 degrees c up eight units no problem these ones are easy aren't they and so once we've gotten through all this uh stretching and squishing and reflecting then we end up with our values here and all we have to do is write them and, and again this minus b value is weird you don't see it very much but it should scare us. Done. Example six, last example. This is actually a, a, a pretty um, neat one. It's going to lead us into our applications soon. We're only given two points on this graph. Now, if that's 90, 45, 8 is the maximum. And then here, 135, notice that 180, 90, 180 would be here. 135 is just another 45 degrees from 90, right? And it's at minus 2. Minus 2. Is the minimum. And notice, just from those two points we're supposed to come up with everything. And it doesn't seem like it's possible, but in fact it is. Because we're given the minimum and maximum, we can sort of figure out everything else. So, over here, I'm going to do some stuff. Uh, write all of the stuff that we need to find. Is there anything that we can get straight off? Not really, right? Uh, I suppose the amplitude, notice we don't have the axis yet, so I can't figure out how much to go up for that. The period, you know, I'm going to have to figure out the period. That's hard to see what the period would be. Um, the axis, well, I'm going to have to figure that out. I can see it's going to be somewhere in here, but I'll have to figure out what that is. D is the phase shift. Since it's a cosine graph, this one's not, not so bad. I could actually get the phase shift because I know for a cosine graph, the phase shift, is just how where the maximum is, right? So the phase shift actually is right 45, right? Because it starts at the maximum. So that's about the only one that I can get straight off. Let's think, start thinking about the other ones. Um, well, let's see if we can get the amplitude first. Well, to get the amplitude, let's find the axis. I can see that it's, it's going to be in here somewhere, right? Kind of halfway between the minimum and the maximum, right? Halfway, the axis is going to be here. Well, where is this? I could figure it out. It's it's the average. It's the average of the minimum and maximum. That's why earlier when we talked about the vertical shift, it's also called the average. So the axis, I can calculate by finding the average of the minimum and maximum. And that's... 6 over 2, which is 3. Oops. 
equals three. And if that's, could I sell you that that was three? Sure, I could. And that's great because now, now I can see what the amplitude is, right? From from the axis, which is 3, this amplitude is 5, isn't it? So A is 5. The last thing, which is maybe the trickiest, I suppose, is the period. Because the period we get, and the, then the B value, once we get the period, um, comes from how long it takes for the graph to start repeating itself. Right? But we don't have a full a full graph here. We got the minimum and the maximum. But you can see from there to there, because this is going to keep going, right? Back and forth. Um, all, that is half a graph. Minimum to maximum on a cosine graph. That's half a graph. I got to figure out what degrees have went by from there. Well, what's this distance here? Well, what's 45 to 135 so if I subtract there that's that's 90 degrees but that's only half right that's only half so the period's actually going to be 180 and notice that B value isn't 180 once I get the you know how much it takes to start repeating itself then I know that that's 360 divided by B, I see B is 2. Squishing that in there. And then I can write my equation. And that's pretty neat. I mean, all we need is the minimum and maximum to be able to write an entire equation. That's pretty good. And you can check that on a graph and calculator if you like, if you see it, if it uh, matches up. All right. Great example, pretty tough, but uh, we'll practice this when we get to our applications as well.